Israeli soldiers basically stormed into the house around 5 a.m. They broke down the doors, they tied up the women and children, and they threw them in a corner. They confiscated all of the electronics, including laptops, cell phones. They beat my 12-year-old cousin in the kitchen. And this was while my aunt was watching. And they detained all of the men. civilians. Burak is a recent high school graduate. He had just started studying engineering. Um, Hashim was also studying engineering. Burak was following in his footsteps. And, you know, my uncle is not involved. My mentally disabled uncle really doesn't have the capacity even to be involved in politically or, or in any way. Ever since the Israeli violence and Gaza started, they have just been trying to survive. Since Wednesday night, we have not received any update despite the U.S. government saying that it's been in contact with Israeli officials. We don't know where they are. We don't know what their condition is. We don't know anything about their whereabouts, anything about their well-being, anything about why this happened and why they were targeted. Uh, obviously, this is the kind of thing we take very seriously. So. Uh, we'll be talking to our Israeli counterparts and trying to get information, uh, more context here about uh, what happened. I really do believe that the Israeli soldiers were emboldened by the U.S.'s complete laxity in protecting American lives abroad, in taking my cousins hostage. At this moment, we are feeling like second-class citizens, and it is up to the United States government at this point to show us that we matter as Americans, that just because we're Palestinian doesn't mean that the U.S. government will forsake us. At this point, that's how we're feeling.